Hello and welcome to Not Just Books. The Williamson County Public Library's monthly program about what is going on in our community. I'm Dolores Greenwald and I'm the director. Today we have a very special guest. His name is Harvey Christman and uh, he works with the African American Heritage Society and we're going to be talking about the society and also talking about their museum called the Macklemore House. And also, I wanted to share with the viewers some of the new things that we are doing at the library. One is a virtual story time, and it's also available on WCTV's YouTube channel. So I hope you enjoy it as well. If you have a young one, pull them in and, and have them participate in story time with us. And thanks for joining us today, and we'll be right back. Hello, and welcome back. I am so pleased to have with me today Harvey Christman with the African American Historical Society. Is that the official name, Harvey? It's the African American excuse me, Heritage Society. Heritage Society. Yeah. I thought I was close. Well, thank you, Harvey, so much for thank coming you for with inviting us. Me. And um, we're going to be talking about the African American Museum and a little bit of the history behind the museum. So um, tell me a little bit about the background of the Macklemore House. I'm going to tell you a little bit about the history of how it got started. Okay. Some former teachers and historian, Miss Mary Mills, which all of everybody in Wilson County know Miss Mary Mills, uh, Miss Louise Patton, Miss Bazilla, Bazilla Harris, Thelma Battle, of course, the county historian, Rick mm -hmm. Warwick, and uh, Miss Mary Pierce. Mm-hmm. They, I guess they were somewhere talking and assuming that, you know, it wasn't too much of the history of Wilson County as far as blacks were being told. Mm -hmm. And they wanted to, I guess, start, start a, a heritage society that was focused more on the African-American history of Wilson County. And tell the, and tell and tell the story. African-American story. Tell their stories. That's great. Uh, so, well, a lot of those folks you mentioned I'm familiar with. Thelma, Mary Pierce. Uh, when, around when did this happen? That was uh, around 1992. 92, okay. Mm -hmm. that's, that's great. And tell us a little bit about what is in the museum. Okay, we got panels telling the story of Harvey McLemore. That's we call it the Macklemore Room. Mm -hmm. And it's also some of the original, I guess you'd say the designs of the house are still there. Uh, we've got representations of what an old kitchen would look like. Uh, we go into another room. It's some more of the history of Wilson County. Mm -hmm. We've got you know, pictures and artifacts mm -hmm. from different times Wilson County from the end of the Civil War up until basically the World War II. Mm -hmm. So it's some kind of representation. Uh, we talk about the schools that's in Wilson County, and which, you know, when you walk in and you see the amount of schools, because we have a big map, mm -hmm. I didn't realize that Wilson County had that many black schools. Oh. Elementary schools. Yeah. I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have known that either. That's interesting. Uh, this is why it's needed to, mm -hmm. to educate folks. Well, Harvey McLemore's story is important, not only because of the, the, the history of Franklin and Williamson County, but his story is one of many, many similar stories mm -hmm. that have somehow gotten lost in the storytelling of history. So having the Macklemore House 
here in Williamson County and to tell his story and other stories is is very important, I think. I always, for me, just being around the house at the time I've been there, mm -hmm. it's the story of a ordinary man doing extraordinary things. Uh, someone who's born into slavery, going from slavery to freedom, and that word entrepreneur wasn't, wasn't banded around during that time, but he was an entrepreneur. He was. That's right. He was really an entrepreneur. And Tell I a little was, bit about that. What did he do after, after the war? I said, after the war? See, Harvey kept doing what he was doing. He was a farmer. Mm -hmm. So after the war, he started sharecropping. Mm -hmm. He sharecropped first on the property that he was a slave. Mm -hmm. And it was sectioned off. The property was sectioned off, and he, he got about, a section of that. I think he had about 40, 45 acres that he sharecrops. Like I said, when you say sharecrop, you understand that the land that he worked, he had to supply all the materials and everything that needed to work the land, whatever he was growing and harvested, but he had to pay, I think it was something like a third of the profits that he earned to the owner, mm -hmm. which was his former owner. Mm -hmm. And I guess after that, he worked, I don't know how many years, something like six, seven years on that property, and then he started sharecropping 68 acres down at the called the cotton plantation. Mm -hmm. So he kept doing what he, would, what he knew to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That was farming. And for him to keep on farming, you know, at the end of the Civil War was a promise made to all of the free slaves that the 40 acres and a mule, mm -hmm. which it didn't happen. Mm -hmm. But somewhere between 1865 and 1880, it took him that 15 years. I guess you say he saved up $400 somewhere along the line. He did, Probably to buy... More. To buy to buy his property. Buy his property. So you think back in I wonder how he in? did that, because I was looking, I was looking a little bit about his background before we started talking, and I realized, you know, that's a that's four hundred dollars is a lot of money. Mm -hmm. So to be able to do that is is quite interesting, I think. I'm gonna say this: it was it was probably something that a lot of slaves, a lot of black people, they 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 they, they had to learn how to save their money, pinch their pennies. And they had to learn very quickly. Very quickly how to do it. Uh, didn't trust banks. Didn't really trust too many people. Yeah. They had to have their own. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I was, you know, sometimes your family passed down history to, to us. Uh, they would take their money with a little change, with their little savings, and they would take it, maybe put it in a jar and bury it somewhere. Mm-hmm on the property and save and determine what they needed needed for. Mm -hmm. So when they really, really, really needed for some reason, mm -hmm. they had the money. They didn't have to go borrow it. They already had it. So working, I, putting back a dime, a nickel, yeah. a penny, yeah. think over 15 years, you're putting that it's back. Amazing. I could talk about this all day, but I want to talk about some of the things going on now at the Macklemore House. It, it's worth going just to see the history and to learn about the history of, of the house and, and, and Harvey McLemore. But you were telling me uh, prior to this conversation that you guys were having a fundraiser. So tell me about the fundraiser. The fundraiser purpose of that is we want to do renovations on the McLemore house. You know, the house has been there for 140 years. And a lot of the stuff that's inside the house is original to the house, mm -hmm. especially the siding. Mm -hmm. Some of it's been replaced, but a lot of it's original. You know, the house was almost falling down when the African American Heritage Society got it, bought the house. Mm -hmm. And that was in about 1997. Mm -hmm. So it has a whole lot of work to be done on it. 
So some of the, the original interior structure is still there. Mm -hmm. Some of the original siding is still there. Especially you can look across the front of the house. Mm -hmm. That's original siding wow. on the house. But That's amazing. now it's dry rotting, falling apart. Uh, we're trying to replace the siding, mm -hmm. the roof, which we got a tin roof on the house. Uh, it needs to be replaced. Uh, we've had some flooring donated from another old house. Mm -hmm. It's being refinished. So we've got the flooring, but we've got to have it installed. Uh, we've got a heating and air unit that's been in the house, I guess now, since 1997. It needs to be replaced, mm -hmm. you know. What, um, what goal, what amount have you, have, has the board said, okay, we're going to ask, we're trying to raise this amount of money, or, <clears throat> or are you going by project by project to raise it? <coughs> Excuse me. I think we, we're trying to get at least $150,000. That would get to our goal of replacing the side, uh, replacing the roof in, doing the heat and air unit, um, maybe you know, doing redoing windows, and we're and doing a sidewalk. The windows by itself is expensive. Mm -hmm. Windows and maybe the doors. We was looking at maybe one hundred fifty thousand, so we can get that going. But we've already got approximately about twenty five thousand of that goal already. That's excellent. So that's what we're doing now. Hopefully that someone through the goodness of their heart <laughs> and through fundraisers that we'll raise that money within the next year. Well, have you, uh, have you guys talked about ways to raise the funds? Yeah, we've got some donations already and some organizations who have came in who said they will help us do it, uh, volunteer their time, architects who have volunteered their time to help with the design work. So we've got especially here in Franklin. It's, it's beautiful to see where the people in Franklin who will come over and help us out to get it going. Well, you, uh, the society every year has a black tie affair. Now, it's, it's kind of a crazy time right now. Mm -hmm. And so it was kind of different this year. But tell us about the black, how the black tie uh, affair is, and what's it about? The Black Tie Affair, it recognizes what we call pioneer families. Mm -hmm. Families who have been in the county for 150 years or more. Say so like, when you look at families who have been around in, in this county for over 150 years, you have uh, quite a few blacks who've been here for 150 years. And I was proud to say, you know, my family was represented in that. Oh, so you're, you're a, a pioneer family then? Yeah, I'm, I'm representative of a number oh, of pioneer family. Excellent. Which was the Buford family. Mm -hmm. But, you know, to recognize those families who've been around for those many years. And a lot of times, you're a part of a family, but you don't really, really know your history. Me discovering a lot about my family that I didn't know. I was looking through some of it last night, some of the discoveries. Mm -hmm. The way Tina and uh, Paulette researches, they can reach back through census records, uh, death records, newspapers. I even heard about a paper I'd never heard of, The Globe. Mm -hmm. Now, we had a couple of young ladies who came from the Carter House and the Compton Plantation, uh, Krista Farrow and Janet Peach. Mm -hmm. They would help us doing our, doing our tours, but they're also researchers. And they you know, help a lot with researching histories. But Tina and Paulette, they're Yeah, dynamic. they're amazing. <laughs> <laughs> they're really amazing. And I can't go along without saying about Thelma. Oh, yeah. Thelma's the original. Yeah. Research a lot history. of uh, with with 
Thelma Battle, a lot of this preservation wouldn't have been going on if she hadn't have spearheaded it mm -hmm. and, and, and got it going. How does someone get in contact with you? Again, it's a crazy time. So how does, how does someone get in contact with, with uh, the society? If they well, wanted to volunteer, if they want or to volunteer, write a big check, or whatever they might want to do. Let me see. I'm gonna give you one of my cards. Oh, okay. Excellent. Uh, as you can see at the Macklemore House, it's got our. They call it email. I'm not too good at all that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, we'll we'll throw this up on the screen and. Uh, so people can have mm -hmm. this information. And uh, like I say, it's located on 11th Avenue, right across from Johnson Elementary School. You know, not when, hard to find at all. It's not hard to find. <laughs> it's the only big white house that's sitting there with a red metal roof. But the thing about you know, Harvey Macklemore. When I looked at his story, uh -huh. born somewhere around about 1829, there's not too much written about his story before then, up until the time he was released from slavery. And I guess for all, all those years, he worked for the Macklemore family, mm -hmm. slaved and toiled on their property. And then after the Civil War, when freedom came, he could have left Tennessee but he decided to stay in Tennessee and still work on the plantation. I'm gonna share a crop of some acres, raise my family. Mm-hmm, that's great, that's but great. But you know, he still got that thought in his head. I'm a free man, I want the American dream. Yes. I want a home, Yeah. a home of my own, something that I can leave my family that they will always have. And I see a way to be able to do that, so I'm mm -hmm. gonna stay here and and do it. It's amazing. I'm not going to just keep on working and working and working and, and not have nothing to show for my That's work. That's right. That's right. I'm going to leave a legacy for my family. I tell you, I, I always love when some of some folks from the museum come and talk mm -hmm. because I, I could talk forever about this. But thank you, Harvey, so much for coming today. And I'm going to bring I'm going to bring you back and Paulette. And, and Tina, and we'll do this, we'll do this yeah. again. Yeah, see now, Tina and Paulette, they can really, really tell the, 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 the story. Well, you did like a good for job, me, too. For me, it's kind of when you sit there on that porch. Yeah, yeah. For me, I, I can sit on that porch as if I'm Harvey and remove everything else that's around it and in that's front of it. That's what it's about. And see what, what, it's about. what he could see when he was just sitting there on that porch looking. That's what it's, it's about. That's like a thing, but there's no school there. Yeah. It's not too many houses, homes around him. It's just an open field. And he can look at, sit across here and look, sit down on his porch, cross his leg, maybe smoke his pipe or whatever <laughs> he was doing, and look out there and say, this is what I have done, accomplished in my lifetime. This is what I'm going to leave for my family. Yeah. Well, thanks again for sharing about um, his story and the story of the Macklemore House, and it truly is a Williamson County treasure. It is a treasure. And if you haven't seen it, uh, it take time to visit. Thanks again so much. All right, thank and you. And you're going to come back, and we're going to talk more. Okay, thank you. <laughs> All right, we'll be right back. When I lost my sight, the only thing I had was reading. The National Library Service for the Blind and Physically Handicapped Library of Congress gives patrons the freedom to read their way. Call 1-888-NLS-READ. So glad you're here with me for story time tonight. I'm Miss Stephanie, Stephanie Wachowski, that is, from the Williamson County Public Library. And again, I'm so happy that you're here. Let me know that you're here by signing on. Give me a shout out as you're signing on, saying hi, hello, something, just letting me know that you're here. 
Dolly's here with me tonight. You can barely see her because she's laying so close to me. Um, but tonight's all about kindness. Now, kindness is an interesting thing to talk about with kids. Um, it's basically us being friendly and us doing things for people without expecting something back. So like smiling, saying hello, waving at people, maybe um, when it comes to a friend, allowing them to have a toy first or um, you know, saying something nice about what someone is wearing or maybe making a card or baking cookies for somebody, either as a family member or maybe for a neighbor. So just being empathetic, being kind, recognizing when people are going through something, like teaching your kids to recognize emotions, like whether someone's happy or sad or those kinds of things. So anyway, all of my books are all about kindness tonight. So um, I thought the first story that we would share is gonna be called Finding Kindness, and it's by Deborah Underwood. Oops. Kindness is sometimes a cup and a card, or a ladder, or a truck, and a tree. A scritch and a cuddle and a rake and a yard. So doing nice things for people. What nice things make you guys happy that you do for others? Give me one example in the chat box of something you've done either yesterday or today for someone else. A carrot or a key. It's seeds and a feeder, or a seat on a train. <clears throat> a daisy, a peach, or a pie. A wave at a baker, a boost on a crane, a sandwich shared up in the sky. Kindness is something, a tip in a case, or a tap when a lace is untied. It's taking a photo or making some space. It's a racket, a rocket, or even a ride. It's dirt and a shovel, petunias and a pail. It's trees that will someday give shade. It's plans and a hammer. It's lumber and nails. Oh, so they're building together. Have you ever done that? Have you tried to build something before? Either with a friend or maybe a neighbor or maybe even your mom or dad or grandma or grandpa. It's houses and cold lemonade. Kindness is sometimes just taking a break or sitting with somebody who's sad Forgiving yourself when you've made a mistake or forgiving a friend who's made you mad. It's cuddling puppies. It's holding a door. It's a toy and a treat and a comb. It's seeing the animals, seeing the animals others ignore. It's a leash and a lick and a home. Kindness is sometimes a song, or a stick, or even a high and a bat and a ball. It's soup when a neighbor is, is sneezy and sick, or a scoop of ice cream if one falls. It's reading a story. It's feeding a fish. It's a bucket, a book, and a yard. It's kissing a sister. It's wishing a wish for someone else. It's a bug, a cup, and a card.
Where will you find kindness today? <clears throat> Let's see if we can share a song together. This one's a new one that I was going to teach you. And normally when I do this um, as part of story time, I have some laminated bluebirds that I normally use. But tonight we're going to pretend that our finger is a bluebird and it's going to fly like this during our first verse back and forth. And um, this song is really simple. So let me go ahead and I'll sing the first verse for you. And then you guys can join in the second time when we sing it. Are you ready? Bluebird, bluebird, through my window. Bluebird, bluebird, through my window. Bluebird, bluebird, through my window. Oh, Johnny, aren't you tired? So let's see if you can try that with me. Are you ready? So get out your finger. This is our bluebird tonight. Bluebird, bluebird, through my window. Bluebird, bluebird, through my window. Bluebird, bluebird, through my window. Oh, Johnny, aren't you tired? Now this second verse, we're gonna tap a friend on the shoulder. So find somebody that's sitting around you or you can tap your own shoulder, maybe mom or dad or grandma or grandpa or maybe baby brother or baby sister or older brother, older sister. And we're gonna tap them just gently on the shoulder. Are you ready? So find a little friend and tap them on the shoulder. Find a little friend and tap them on the shoulder. Find a little friend and tap them on the shoulder. Oh, Johnny, aren't you tired? So let's sing that one more time. Are you ready? Find a little friend and tap him on the shoulder. Find a little friend and tap him on the shoulder. Find a little friend and tap him on the shoulder. Oh, Johnny, aren't you tired? <gasps> Wonderful job. Thank you for your help with my song. This next one, it's called Super Buns. Kindness is her superpower. And this one is by Diane Credicensor? Credicensor, I think is how you say her last name. I hope I'm not butchering it. <clears throat> so again, super buns. Kindness is her superpower. Super buns was super kind. She had big eyes for caring. She has big ears for listening. A warm, happy smile a huge heart, and a fluffy tail that's just cute. Thanks, Super Buns! Oh, so she's helping. She's watering, isn't she? She loved being kind no matter what, her big sister Blossom said. Super Buns, for the 10 billionth time, your name is Buns. You are not a superhero. Blossom was 100% positive. Superheroes have powers like strength, speed, and leaping tall billion buildings in a single bound. And as Blossom always told Buns, kind is kind. She's being very kind, isn't she? Trash can, helping somebody with an umbrella, helping to get their kite from being untangled. But it is not a superpower. Blossom was a know-it-all. She knew everything about everything. As she sang, I know everything about everything. Fact. Kangaroos can hop backward. I know that almonds are a member of the rose family. And fact, dinosaurs lay eggs. And fact, the planet Venus spins backwards. Fact, bumber shoot is another word for umbrella. Two facts, an ostrich egg is bigger than its brain and a peanut is not a nut. And I know you eat hot cobbler with cold milk, so come on. Uh-oh, she's trying to get her sister to come quicker. 
The bunnies were on their way to Granny's with a fresh bake, piping hot ca carrot cobbler. Heidi, your smile makes me smile. Here you go, fishy fish. One pancake coming up. Blossom thought all of this kindness was slowing them down. Kind schmind, she said. Kind will get you nothing but cold cobbler. Make it snappy, buns. We're still got to pick up the milk. said the sister. So she's trying to blow up balloons for them, isn't she? But buns couldn't help being super, super buns, that is, even to her sister. After you, Blossom, she said. Oops. And after you too, Miss Fox, I noticed that you've been following us all day. Uh... Did you say Fox? I don't know. Oh no! There goes the carrot cobbler. Blossom knew exactly what to do. Run, Buns, run! I know all about foxes. First she's gonna gobble up the cobbler and then she's gonna gobble us up. Here you go. Thank you, Miss Fox. I won't gobble your cobbler, Miss, or you. I'm not hungry. I'm lost. Can you help me get home? Blossom was speechless, almost. Lost, she said. Well, why didn't you just say so? I know everything about being lost. Did you know that the most lost items are, let's see, keys, phones, eyeglasses, and shoes. Once, Buns lost her homework and I found it in Miss Lynn's flower pot. The lost city of Atlantis has never been found and Roanoke was the lost colony. I know that the letters in lost, L-O-S-T, can also spell lots and slot and that lost is the past tense for the word lose. And Grammy once told me that I never am a at a loss for words. So we just take Bunny Lane, drive, Bunny Lane to Carrot Drive until we come to Miss Muffins, Marvelous Muffins. And then we'll make a sharp right turn up on a hill onto the North Hasseltop Drive. We'll follow that all the way to Foxtrot Trail. And then... You're home. Thanks for helping me not be lost, Super Blossom. And just like that, Blossom learned that she did know everything about everything. But maybe Buns was right. Maybe being kind was kind of super. Let's go get that milk, Super Buns. Grammy is waiting. Yay. So as you can see, my stories so far tonight have been about doing simple things and being empathetic toward people and recognizing their emotions. So all things that are important to being kind to one another. So let's see if we can do another song together. Can you guys do head, shoulders, knees, and toes with me? Let's see if we know where everything is. Let's, let's do a little test. Are you ready? Can you touch your head? And can you touch your shoulders? And how about your knees and your toes and find your eyes and your ears and your mouth and your nose. So let's see if we can do it together. Are you ready? Head, shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes. Head, shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes. Eyes and ears and mouth and nose. Head, Shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes. Let's try that one more time, but let's do it a little bit faster this time. Are you ready? You gotta keep up with me. Head, shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes. Head, shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes. Eyes and ears and mouth and nose. Head, shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes. 
Wonderful job. Thank you all for your help. I've got one more story to share with you. This one's called Be Kind, and it's by Pat Zietlow Miller. Pat Zietlow Miller. Be Kind. <clears throat> Tanisha spilled grape juice yesterday. Uh-oh. What would you do if you spilled grape juice? All over her new dress. Oh no, has that ever happened to you? Everyone laughed. I almost did too, but mom always tells me to be kind. So I tried. I didn't think it worked. I said, purple's my favorite color. I thought Tanisha would smile, but she ran into the hall instead. When she came back, snack time was over. She put on her art smock and didn't look at anyone. Oh, poor Tanisha, what would you do for her? I almost told Tanisha that art was my favorite class, but I didn't want to, her to leave again. So I painted purple splotches and added some green until I had a bunch of beautiful violets. While I painted, I thought all about Tanisha. Should I have handed her a napkin? Let her borrow my sweatshirt? Spilled my juice so everyone stared at me instead? What does it mean to be kind anyway? Making cookies for Mr. Rinaldi who lives alone. Maybe it's giving. Letting someone with small feet have too tight shoes. He might win races in them too. <laughs> Maybe it's helping. Putting dishes in the di putting dirty dishes in the sink. Cleaning up after Otis, our class guinea pig. He's a messy eater. Do you guys have to clean up after pets at your house? Maybe it's paying attention. Telling Desmond that, he, that I like his blue boots. Asking the new girl to be my partner. Listening to Aunt Franny's stories, even the ones that I've heard a million times. Being kind should be easy. Like throwing away a wrapper or recycling a bottle, or saying words like thank you or bless you. My mom says the quickest way to be kind is to use people's names. Hey, Carla, what's new, Omar? Good afternoon, Rabbi Mandel Mandelbaum. Being kind can be hard too, even when you know what to do. Teaching someone something it's I'm good at is tricky even when I'm patient. And sticking up for someone when other kids aren't kind is really hard and really scary. Maybe I can't solve Tanisha's grape juice problem. Maybe all I can do is sit by her in art class and paint this picture for her because I know she likes purple too. Maybe I, can, maybe I can only do small things, but my small things might join small things other people do too. And together, they could grow into something big. Something really big, something big, so big, that all of our kindness spills out all over our school and spreads throughout our town. I think that would be good, don't you? It could travel across the country and go all the way around the world. Right back to Tanisha and me, so we can be kind again and again. And even again. So pretty. She gave Tanisha her picture. How kind. 
let everybody be kind out there to each other. Um, and I have a couple activities of how you guys can do that that I was going to share with you. I've found on a couple different websites a few things. Um, this first one is called Random Acts of Kindness. And it's a cute little thing that you can um, color and then you can give these away. So one says you're important, you're loved, you're special, you're a great friend, I care about you, thank you, and you are my friend. And it's um, from Sprout and it's actually Kindness Counts. And so it comes from coloringhome.com is where you can actually locate it. Coloringhome.com from Sprouts and it's called Kindness Counts. And then another one that I found is from Postcard Pail. So um, it's yourpostcardpail.com has a kindness bingo that you can do with your children or you can give it, um, you know, either with your child or you can do it, you know, with a neighbor and give it to somebody or a friend and do that together. The other one that I have is from MomsMessyMiracles.com, MomsMessyMiracles.com, and that's Preschool Acts of Kindness. And it's a whole calendar worth of fun little things like giving a friend a hug, doing a sibling's chore, learning something new, um, say please and thank you, leave a note for somebody like the mailman, you know, cool things like that. So great things and great things we can share with each other and teach kindness in the world would be a wonderful thing. I'm so glad you guys were all here with me tonight to join me. Feel free to share my video with other friends and family, and I will see you guys all again tomorrow night. Bye! Again, thank you for joining us today to learn a little bit about the Macklemore House and to participate in one of our library story times. Follow us on YouTube and Twitter at WCPLTN and sign up for our weekly newsletter to find out what we are doing and what our hours are. Thank you again so much and enjoy your world and read. <laughs>